Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. Today we have a special guest, Vlad Kulikov. He's a Sambo master, an active Sambo competitor, lots of world championships, and we recently filmed a DVD series that'll be coming out later this year. But, uh, and, and Sean, your partner's here today. Vlad, what are you gonna show for us right now? All right guys, today I'm going to show you a technique from, from the back. Uh, uh, I started doing this technique early in my days because in Sambo turnovers are very valuable. You don't score the turnover itself, but you score a uh, subsequent pin. And uh, uh, technique number one that you usually go on submission grappling would be choke. There is no chokes in Sambo, so you, you can attack other legs, but you're given uh, very little time to do so. So usually turnover is a fair game and you can score four points, which is a huge margin or whatnot. Uh, and secondly, lately, about a year ago, I mean, I, I've known guillotine for a lot of years, uh, the submission guillotine, but I started hitting and just something made sense. You know, my quantity just shifted to different quality. I see guillotines over, uh, over and over, all over, including my sleep. So what it is, it's a combination of my favorite uh, pin. If you take it one step further from Sambo to submission grappling, it's gonna turn into a great guillotine, good setup. And what it is, uh, it's not complex. Uh, there's a couple steps to it, but not, nothing crazy, and it's a bit sneaky, okay, uh, hence the value of it. I'll start with the hooks, of course, you know, uh, uh, probably I'll try it with a choke or whatever, but uh, Sean is a monster here, and he's got no neck, uh, so, so hard to get under his jaw. So, normally what I do, I get power half Nelson, just like this, right? I'll have an uh, underhook and hand here. Uh, sequence of gripping is important, not like this, but like this. I just pinch his head down, just like such. There, it's a, only a setup. What I'm going for, I just want to put my hand on his neck, just like such. So from power half, I went to regular half Nelson, and I'm going to shift. Uh, if I apply ha uh, half Nelson with my left, I'm going to start shifting to my right, just right there. Make sure that you exercise control of the position. Don't cross your ankles, be slow if you want, he is not going to run away anywhere. He cannot run away from me because of my half Nelson, and he cannot really uh, turn into me because of my post, okay? Uh, it's gonna take some time because r right now my leg is strapped. It's gonna take me a couple seconds to pull it out. However, some people try to explode into me and if he does explode, hypothetically, it will make my job easier because he's gonna bridge to explode and which means uh, I can pull my leg a little bit easier, mm -hmm. okay? So what I do is I keep pulling my leg out and mounting him, I keep this arm here and immediately wrap him. So that we the pinpoint. Okay, I can score my pin. Next thing, tripod, head down, elevate your body just a little bit, right guys? Not enough for him to pull guard on your head, guys, exactly. You don't want to do that. Just a little bit, just your hips, so I can put my hands together. Once I put my hands together, grapes in, and finish the guillotine. Simple enough? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And you see what I'm talking about, sneaky, right? Yeah. It's all conventional, nothing crazy. I don't do any backflips or jumping arm bars. Yet it's uh, fairly simple. One more time. Boom, I got here. If I can get my half Nelson right away, by all means do. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I'll prepare a little bit. Right there, and here, and here. Break him down. And as I keep pulling my right leg out from underneath him, I mount. I mount and a head wrapped already. Nice and deep. Little tripod, elevate just a little bit, just enough to get your grip. Lock it up, throw your grips in. Exhale, squeeze and keep in like a reverse hyper with your lower back. Like we go back to uh, the turtle position, what if he keeps his elbows in tight? E even tighter, Sean, is there? Yeah. No, that's very easy to get in. Okay, then you just grab his wrist. Yes. Grab the wrist. Okay. Can we see it one last time, full speed? How's that one feel, Sean? Not bad. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> okay. Would you like to try? Um, no, I'm just watching today. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that looks great. Can we see one, one more technique? Absolutely. Uh, in our series, we touched up on flu shot. Jason on flu uh, choke, code name flu shot. Uh, I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna show just a little variation. Okay. So if Sean in the guard, uh, somehow he ended up with a front headlock or guillotine with an arm in, just like this. All right, guys. So what I want to do as I lean him on this side, I want to hop. Usually, sometimes if I lean him flat back, his legs will come up automatically. Yes, and I'm going to be locked in that position. That's why once I'm here, I'm going to lean to his side a little bit. Because if I had regular, if I was stuck in a regular guillotine, I would have my arm to block his leg. 
Now, with an arm trapped, I have no such lap here. Sometimes I can, but usually if he pinches in, I really don't. So that's why uh, I have to tilt him to exercise that control. And now I just simply pass over, flatten him out. Uh, in order to finish my flu shot, I need to uh, employ one more step. This leg here goes knee on the inside. Pull my hand out, hands together, and finish flu shot. So yeah, that uh, technique kind of popped out of nowhere when Jason did that in the UFC. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, it was awesome. Love this technique. But most people, in my experience, once you get to the side like that, they're gonna let go of the guillotine. Do you have a way of making them not let go? Good point. Uh, it's funny because when I roll and uh, the owner of uh, Asylum Fire Gym watches, he says, let go of the guillotine. Uh, but it's too late. Uh, I see this move, you know, just like a chest or whatever. Uh, I try to foresee what he's gonna do. And usually, by the time he realizes what's going on, it's too late. So once I'm here, here, I just want to rotate Sean towards the camera. All I do, I pinch my uh, cheek and my shoulder together. And, you know. Now his arm is stuck. Yeah. Then I pull out one, even without putting my hands together. Was it, uh, Sean, honestly, why are you trying to pull out? Yeah. It's honestly very simple. Simply due to body anatomy and how th things are entangled, uh, there's plenty of friction. Yeah, and uh, when I squeeze, I don't even try to squeeze hard. I just lock it in and uh, friction just allows him to pull the arm out. And once I put my hands together and finish the circle, complete the circle, I just squeeze, shoulder in, head comes up. So would you bait your opponent by giving him your neck to, to finish? Yes. Uh, once again, uh, intelligence comes to play if, if I, uh, and, and knowledge of your opponent. Uh, if I know I can get away with it, yes, absolutely. Uh, baiting is a great... Uh, same thing with the stand-up. Very often I, I, I bait people by exposing my leg, and once they attack, uh, I counter. Cool. See you one last time, full speed. Two very cool techniques from Vlad Kulikov. Thank you so much. If My people pleasure. want to uh, get in touch with you, where can they find you online? Uh, check out Asylum Gym. Uh, I don't know the website, uh, but I'm sure it will pop. Or find me on Facebook, Vladislav Kulikov. Cool. Thanks guys for watching This Week in BJJ. Don't we'll forget back next to buy time. the app, DVDs, or buy stream, on-demand stream. That'll be out uh, sometime before Christmas this year. It's going to be a great set on throws, takedowns, groundwork, and leg locks. Okay guys, see you next time. Thank you. That concludes this installment of This Week in BJJ. Watch and review past episodes on iTunes and YouTube. And then be sure to join us again right here for another live edition of This Week in BJJ. Brought to you by BudoVideos.com.